they continue to move the goalposts. If you're not um, skeptical, at the, skeptical at this point, you're either low IQ or getting pick, kickbacks from Big Pharma. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a good day. So today I'm going to be reacting to some of the comments that I got regarding the recent videos that I put up about the COVID-19 booster vaccines that are covering for BA4, BA5. So thus the title, Vaccine Reactions, get it? <laughs> um, so I will respond to them in just a few minutes, but there are a couple of new items that I wish to uh, put on the table relative to these vaccines. So while it is being recommended, that the COVID vaccine and flu vaccine be taken um, soon because of the season. Um, there has been quite a stir about what that actually means as to whether people should be taking them on the same day, splitting them up. Um, the head of the, um, the White House COVID-19 response um, whose name is Dr. Ash, uh, pardon me, Dr. Ashish Jha recently said, I really believe this is why God gave us two arms, one for the flu shot and one for the COVID shot. Well, so much for a separation of church and state. Makes me wonder what Dr. Jha thinks, why we, um, why God gave us two um, legs and two ears and two eyes and two kidneys. Are we supposed to be treating them separately also? Um, but obviously, I joke about this, um, but it's, I still think that when a government official makes a comment such as this, they should be backing it up with something to support it. And as we know, and as was stated by a Dr. Monique, uh, Monica Gandhi, who is an infectious disease expert at University of California, San Francisco. We don't have data on the simultaneous administration of the influenza vaccine and the new COVID boosters. Now, reactions happen. These are two different types of immunological responses that will be created by the two vaccines. Shouldn't we have some data to back up that it's okay to give them at the same time? If a person's choosing to do so, they should be given the data so that they can make the best informed dis, um, decision for themselves. And that is not what is happening here. Now, I do also realize, though, that the vaccine has been out for just two weeks, but we have not seen the sky fallen. We have not heard of increased vaccine reactions to this booster compared to the previous booster. So. I, as I've said before, I do strongly believe we need to wait probably six to eight weeks before we can really make any more definitive statement as to whether there is any increased reactions. It's going to take some time for those reports to come through. And of course, regardless, we still have no idea whether this vaccine actually works um, in terms of providing more benefit over what we have already available to us. You know, we've talked about how all we've seen so far are um, studies in eight mice to saw their antibody levels go up. Now, as I had mentioned previously, though, because of the fact that the vac this new vaccine is made to specifically um, mimic the spike protein of the BA4, BA5, I do believe it will provide more protection for people than the, than the current booster that is available. How much? Again, I'm not willing to say because I don't have a working crystal ball. Now, before I go on to the reactions um, to these comments that were made, I do want to put out to people, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, join us on Patreon, please join us on our other social media platforms, and share this information with other people that you know and think would benefit from it. And now for the comments. Dr. David, riddle me this. If the shot doesn't protect against infection, then why does it matter who takes it? You're protected yourself. I think this meant to say you protected yourself from hospitalization. Also, the survival rate is 99 plus percent. So why give children a vaccine or healthy adults for that matter? How come risk versus benefit is not discussed? You just going to be a, a big pharma shill? <laughs> Second comment, Dr. David. Actually, that was the stated goal. They said all they all said two and done and it prevents infection. You want a video of the CDC lady state, state, saying it's preventing infection? They continue to move the goalposts. If you're not um, skeptical, at the, skeptical at this point, you're either low IQ or getting pick, kickbacks from big pharma. Okay, so I know that a lot of this I have responded to already, but I always want to be very clear in what my positions are. Now, first of all, as with most matters related to healthcare, I advocate for people being able to make a choice about their and their family's healthcare. Okay, I've never advocated for a vaccine mandate. 
I am also glad that people who choose to get a vaccine have the ability to get so if they think it is in their best interest and they believe that the benefits outweigh the risks. Now, I am not clear as to what level of skepticism would warrant, um, a, a, you know, would lead to a person having a lower IQ or being a shill for uh, big pharma. But I also know very intelligent people who are very strong advocates of the vaccine and who do not get kickbacks from big pharma. Um, that's not to say that not very smart people um, who are involved in um, big medicine and who work with big insurance and who work for the FDA, who incidentally or not, who get, you know, the FDA gets money through the application process for applying. There's lots of fees that go on to getting a uh, approval for a medication. And of course, that money goes back to the FDA, um, uh, which of course is kind of like the left hand, you know, shaking the right hand a little bit too close for me. But nonetheless, you know, it's way too broad of a statement just because people do not agree with a person's particular point of view to question their IQ or to question whether they are getting paid off. Now, as far as my own relationship to Big Pharma, drug reps have never been allowed in my office. They are not allowed to leave samples, brochures, or pens, uh, and, um, and or they're not allowed to even come in to try to educate us here on what their next greatest, late, latest and greatest med uh, drug is. Um, so I don't know if you are referring to me personally, but I'm clearly not one who is either getting money or any kind of kickbacks or even overly supportive of Big Pharma in the first place. Now, if you've been, if you have been following this channel, I have discussed from the very beginning the risks versus benefits. This is something that I mentioned in my presentations to the FDA that I was invited to speak when the vaccines were first being, um, were first being released um, to the public when the considerations were there in the first place. I've talked about blood clots. I've talked about myocarditis and pericarditis. I've talked about the very low risk to children in terms of catching COVID. Um, and I've questioned the needed for, for universal vaccination. But it does matter as to who takes the vaccine because we have continued to see that it is significant that the vaccine does significantly reduce hospitalization and death um, in that the people who are most likely to be hospitalized or died from being sick from COVID are people more likely to be unvaccinated. Now, of course, note I said sick with COVID. I wasn't talking about being hospitalized who are asymptomatic, who just happened to test positive for COVID. And of course, there are many people out there who are asymptomatic. And of course, this vaccine will not make you less symptomatic since if you're asymptomatic, because asymptomatic means, by definition, you don't have symptoms. Um, so, of course, people who are at higher risk of disease are going to get to be the most likely to benefit from the vaccine. Those who are healthy, young, who don't have high risk are the people who are going to least benefit from the vaccines. And therefore, the risk versus benefit ratio does change based upon a person's circumstance. Now, it was very uncommon for people to be getting breakthrough infections, which me, um, when a person had COVID originally or had the original vaccines through the or original variant, um, the alpha, the beta. It wasn't until we kind of got delta and then more into the Omicron that we really started to see the breakthrough infections. This should not be a surprise to anyone. The, the spike protein on these newer variants changed and made it so that the antibodies that were made from prior COVID or prior vaccination no longer were was sticking very well to the spike proteins of these new sub variants to the point where they would provide some protection but not complete protection. So just like as we said before, if you've had a recent vaccine, you're less likely to catch it now. If you have had a recent infection, you are less likely to catch it now. I do very much appreciate that the U.S. government is now acknowledging that herd immunity is a thing. That's why we've heard um, President um, Biden recently say that the pandemic phase is over, but also recognizing that natural immunity is worth something. It's worth a lot. It's probably worth as much, if not more, than the vaccines. So when a person last had a booster, whether it was a vaccine booster or a natural booster, that will also depend on how relevant a future vaccine will be. Anyways, I hope that this helps give you some more information, thoughts, to, um, so thoughts there, maybe some new information that you didn't know before. Have a great day. We are all about health, education, and choice. 
please share this with others who are of the same view.